Good morning, Your Honors. May it please the Court. My name is Andrew Harris. On behalf of the plaintiff, may I reserve three minutes for rebuttal, please? Thank you. This is a summary judgment. It's a um, narrow issue that the plaintiffs have brought, which is whether 768075, a uh, so-called immunity statute, can apply in this case. The defendant moved for summary judgment and was granted uh, summary judgment on that basis. Or let me backtrack. We don't know why the trial court granted summary judgment. There was no hearing. Uh, the order does not explain it. But the defendant's sole basis for moving for summary judgment was this statute. The statute only grants immunity if there's an owner ownership or controlling interest. Who cares who is not liable in this case? What is the liability of anybody for this accident? Well, the liability, the plaintiff's allegations are that... Under the facts of the case, what possible liability is there for a man who crawls under and falls asleep on somebody else's property under a tractor trailer and then gets run over by the tractor trailer? Well, the defendant didn't move for summary judgment on that basis, but to answer your question, um, it's very, to answer your question, there was no pre-inspection examination by the driver before he got Does into his truck. have to be? Pardon me? The man is, a, is not an invitee, is he? Well, status is irrelevant okay. with, under Sir, the... Sir? He is, the he evidence is, is that... not an invitee, is he? Correct, Your Honor. He's a, at best a licensee, probably a trespasser. But let's say that he's a licensee. Well, even the if duty he's a, is to refrain from wanton and willful misconduct, isn't it? That I, I would disagree with and, that. Or to disregard a known, actually known, not should have known danger. Correct. I would I would disagree with that as well. Uh, under the common law, our, the plaintiff's contention, the case law is clear. In, in our contention, that in an active negligence case, a known or should have known standard applies. Shamaki, um, Gonikowski, I'm not pronouncing it well, going back to, to it's Maldonado. Not a discovered licensee or trespasser. In fact, that's your whole problem. P pardon me, that's your, that's your whole contention. He was not discovered there and then actively, uh, negligently acted against. Well, he, he was should not have been discovered. discovered. That's the whole problem that you have. Well, the plaintiff's theory is that he should have been discovered, though. But of that doesn't do it under the law. But, but the motion was confined to the statute, to the immunity statute. The motion for summary judgment was focused specifically on the immunity statute. So, what is your argument that that piece of ground was not under the control of the licensee, who certainly seems to look more like a, a lessee? Uh, sure, Your Honor. Uh, the agreement, obviously, the title of it states it's a temporary license. The city of Miami Beach, the entire premise of the agreement, the financial, financial structure, is a license agreement. The agreement specifies that what we contend is the licensee. Had, this, had the city had to have paid ad valorem, or had they lost their ad valorem taxation status because of a lease agreement, the licensee, or what we contend is the licensee, would have had to pay for that, pay for that because the entire premise here, the city does not want licensees. This is not a, um, the, the, again, the formation of the agreement. It doesn't specify exclusive but what, possession. But, but, but why, should that, uh, why should that have anything to do with immunity from uh, a tort liability to a third person? What is the third person's business? as to how the city and the licensee, whatever, lessee, whatever, arrange its business. Well, since under the common law our contention is there is a cause of action, the legislature has provided immunity to those who own or control property, a limited set of circumstances. The legislature... It doesn't matter whether it's a, they have to control property, correct? I would disagree that they have a controlling interest in the property. I would well, disagree. Not, okay, hold, hold on just a second, because though we may be splitting hairs, I think the hairs are important. It doesn't, the statute doesn't say they have to have a controlling interest in the property. It says they have to control an interest in the property. 
Those may be two very different things. You're, Controlling interest is probably a term of art that we all understand, right? You're, you're absolutely correct, Your Honor. Okay, so to you're, control an interest in property is probably something less than having a controlling interest in property. I couldn't disagree with you, Your Honor. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. So, yes. So here's my question. Whether we call, and I think you're right, I think they want it, the city wants it to be a license, though the city doesn't really have a dog in this particular fight. Uh, if they did, I agree with you for reasons um, having nothing to do with the immunity statute, they want this to be a license and not a lease. Um, but whether we call it a license or whether we call it a lease, if we look at the terms of the agreement, what it does, um, it seems to lean more towards a lease than a license, certainly not for Avalorum purposes, but in terms of giving uh, the defendant in this case the ability to control an interest in property, it seems to me that it leans more to a lease than a license. What do you think about that? I would disagree. I don't think they control an interest in the property. I think they were given the use of the property for one limited specific purpose, to bring trailers onto that, not exclusive, by the way. Where does the, it say it's not exclusive? Well, it doesn't say that it's exclusive. So it doesn't say it's non-exclusive. It doesn't say it is exclusive. Correct. But the defendant, the defendant repeated, repeatedly in the brief, I don't mean to harp on the defendant states, there was exclusive possession. That, in our contention, that's an issue of material fact, not right for summary judgment as a matter of law. But the, the document does seem designed <clears throat> to be exclusive. It prohibits assignment. It uses the term no sublease, and it allows the lessor, really, but the licensor, um, a right of access. So why are you doing all those things if that's not an exclusive control of that piece of ground? I think it's an ambiguous document the lawyer, where the intent of the parties should factor in here, the only party to testify here was the vice president of the defendant who testified that she had a, her company had a temporary license. We didn't hear from the city of Miami Beach. It's their burden here on summary judgment. I understand you're saying that it cannot be subleased, but that presupposes, and I understand the defendant says it implies a lease, but again, implication to me means not right for well, what summary is the, judgment. What is it? The genuine issue here. You can't. Isn't this just the proverbial paper issue? You didn't come forward with anything that's in support of your position, did you? Well, no, but it, it's the defendant's Into, burden. Did you? In terms of uh, testimony as to the intent of the parties? Yes. No, but not, the only intent of the parties we've heard from is the defendant's own testimony, which is that there's a temporary license. That was so, the vice president of the company who so, testified in her deposition. So, but that doesn't that doesn't reach the issue, which is a legal one. If if you get there, but we, if if the uh, tipsy coachman is going in this direction rather than that one, uh, it's only it doesn't matter as to whether control a control of an interest in the property. Well, I don't believe that they controlled an interest in the property. That's a licensee have? does what not did control. They have? Didn't they have the duty to maintain the uh, gate at the front of the property? What weren't their obligations imposed for them to maintain the property and to maintain the gated entranceway at the property? They did have a duty, yes. But but that's not that's one factor. We're looking at a summary judgment here as a matter of law. Did that you don't have anything to the contrary. There's only the only thing that shows anything shows an interest. Didn't they pay rent for thirty days? Yeah, yes. That they sounds did. like a lease, doesn't it? That that I, I don't know what to say. That could be a light to me. It, it says you're getting a specific right to use the property for a purpose. Turner okay. from the second. They had district. to pay a security deposit. Yes. They paid a what that what was termed rental. I don't know if the term rental is there. Off the top of my head, I don't know if that was for used. For a specific term, for a specific piece of property. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the question I have is, what did you bring forward to say that it is a non-exclusive agreement? Well, we would only have the agreement. Um, in terms of coming forward, the agreement, of course, which is part of the, and, and the testimony of the defendant here, which is that she had a temporary, she had a, li a license is not exclusive. A license. Let's say, let's say it is not exclusive. Let's say that a matter of law is not exclusive. That doesn't exclude the 
interest in the property. Well, I don't know how that you're controlling. Well, you have to have, you have something. He has, what is he doing? What is the employer or the defendant doing on the property? He has some interest there. Well, mean? the de the defendant surely has the right to be there, but Turner from the second district, where there was a truck driving school, and I understand you're not bound by that case, but a truck driving school which had a designated use of the property, and the second there was a it was a tax action fight, not a personal injury matter, but the second district held that was a license and not a lease. Um, All right, that, and you so you distinguish that case. Well, no, that's it's the case against that we, you, isn't it? Pardon me, I'm sorry. Isn't it against you? No, the the second. We relied on that case because the, why? Well, because the second district held that a that where the entity had the use of the property for a designated purpose, that that connotated a license relationship, a licensor, licensee, for or what? a landowner, licensee. For what purpose? Not for the immunity statute, did it? Well, it was not for the. It was not a personal injury lawsuit, but it got to the it got to the core issue of whether or not you had a license or a lessee relationship. But, uh, what I'm attempting to suggest is that. Even if it was a license, it's a license is some kind of interest in the property. I don't. It, well, you have to control an interest, and I don't. I believe the legislature's purpose here. It's a departure from the common law. It has to be done clearly, strictly, in order to grant immunity in this situation. So the legislature has to be unambiguous. Their purpose here was designed at landowners and lessees. That's, that's certainly, there's nothing for, I'm sorry, Your Honor. No, we'll leave you time for rebuttal, but. <clears throat> Thank you. May it please the Court, Jim Clark for the National Marine Manufacturers Association. I have, um, I can really find no difference between this case and the case of the outdoor media versus Santa Rosa County case. Um, in that case, uh, the outdoor media was given a lease, uh, the court ultimately heard, uh, decided, to put signs on the county's property. And it boiled down, of course, as all these license versus leasing uh, situations do. Except to that was an exclusive right. It, it was agreed by both sides in outdoor media that the right granted was exclusive. That was exclusive. And it also cites the case of Randall Industries, where there was three cab uh, parking places, I believe it was three, that were granted at, a, at an airport. That was an exclusive right. This was an exclusive right in, 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 in all practicality, because there were 70 semi-tractor trailers parked on this piece of vacant lot. Uh, owned by the city of, of Miami Beach. The problem, of course, is that the city had to sort of walk a tightrope here. They can't call it a lease. They can't. Because they, they jeopardize their ad valorem taxation status, right? Absolutely. Among other things, there's no more self-help. They have to go through eviction procedures. If they're a holdover tenant, there are all sorts of unintended mm -hmm. consequences if the city, not a party to this action, calls it a lease rather than a license. But I think that this court... And, of course, that would not... If, it, uh, if they call it from here to next year, the uh, tax assessor would not uh, uh, agree with that characterization, I am sure, no matter what they call it. Right. They tried right. their best, but what they did, not what they called it, is what it did. But I, right, and I think that's what this court needs to do, is look at the agreement, look at the intent of the parties as expressed in the agreement. What is this really? Is this is this a, an interest in a in a piece of the, the, of the property. And we contend that it, that it certainly was. And if you, all you have to do is look at the agreement. We've already heard about what had to maintain the, prop, the uh, property. They had to make sure that the gates and the fences were maintained. They had to, they had to quit and dismiss and leave the property at the end of, a particular, uh, of the particular uh, period. Is a, is a license to go over land an interest in land? I think the courts have said that a license is not an interest in land. But the words, as, as Judge Emus has indicated, the words are, do you control for a limited period of time an interest in the property? It may be that NUMA doesn't have an interest in that property, but it controls by being there. I mean, the city of Miami Beach can only come 
on that property while we're there during business hours. So with they're advanced controlling notice. someone else's interest in land. Is I'm sorry. They're controlling someone yes. else's interest. Right, in land. and certain and certainly they they were. So uh, it, it, the outdoor media case says that. It, in that case, outdoor media was given more than the privilege to go onto the property, uh, and because of that, it was a lease. Because they had, they had, the, the, uh, as I understand, a a, a uh, license is to go onto property for a specific purpose. Uh, you, you may have a license to go onto your neighbor's property to maintain a common wall. You may have a license to do uh, a lot of other things. But where you have a situation where we're taking this piece of property for a month and we're going to park 70 tractor trailers on it while we shuttle things back and forth to the, to the boat show, which is essentially what was happening here, that's a lease of that property for the purpose of parking your 70 tractor trailers there. And so we think the court should look at the entire agreement, make the determination that this was actually a lease, <clears throat> even if it... And, and certainly a lease gives, a, gives an individual an, an interest in a, in a piece of property. But we probably don't even need to reach but the issue. We probably don't even lease. need to reach that based on the, the uh, discussion we had earlier about whether you're controlling the interest in the property. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Rebuttal. Thank you, Your Honors. Um, Your Honor, that was exactly the point of outward media, is that the exclusiveness of the agreement there for uh, county signs is, was the, in, as I read the opinion, the control, the, no pun intended, the controlling factor in that decision, whereas in Turner, which you had, um, they did not address the exclusiveness. It was a designated purpose for the parking um, or for the driving school, and the second district held that was a license. Uh, Defense counsel, I believe, um, conceded that a license is not, if you have a license, you do not have um, an interest in the property. Um, if I, Which if comes I back to Judge Emus's point that it's controlling an interest, not right. a controlling interest. Can you have a non-possessory interest in property such that it satisfies this immunity statute? Can you have a non-possessory, a non-ownership interest in this property sufficient to control an interest in the property and therefore be a subject to the immunity statute? I would say no, because it has to be done clearly and unambiguously by the legislature. There, there's no, the defendant has an interest to come onto the property to park the trailers. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say otherwise. I mean, under, you, you could make that interpretation. I understand that. Just like I have an interest if I purchase a ticket to go to the Marlins game. I have, an, I have a license. I've received a ticket to go onto that property. I have an interest. But, but the ticket holder is not maintaining the gated entrance and doesn't have an obligation to quit and deliver the premises after the term is up or to pay a security deposit or rental payment. Um, and it does reference the term rent in, okay. in that agreement. So it's, it's certainly more than a license. Whether it's a lease or not, we may not have to reach the issue. Yeah, I certainly didn't say there wasn't a, a rent term. I just didn't know if the term right. rent was used. Yeah. Um, but you're right, going onto the property as a ticket holder doesn't have all of those aspects. But again, you still don't have an exclusiveness relationship here. They could, you could have many different licensees. For all we know, the, um, the landowner here is coming onto the property to also clean the property because they have the right to come on for inspection or for any other purpose whatsoever. Well, leases have that term. Leases but, but, commonly have such a clause, right? But but for any purpose whatsoever, not just inspection or not just determining if the property has been well maintained, they can come on and they could go and bring in a competitor of the defendant. I don't know if there is a competitor, but they could bring in, they discuss the number of tractor trailers. We may have a situation where they, they get more money from somebody else and we've got 170 trailers from another company. In fact, did that occur? What's that? In fact, did that occur? Well, there's no evidence in the record, but the, we're, if we're looking in the interpretation of the agreement and the intent of the parties and what the agreement does, um, the agreement doesn't have exclusiveness. It doesn't have what a landlord tenant, uh, a, a tenant's exclusive obligation. I'm sorry. Is it revocable at will? Is this agreement revocable at will? 
I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think you have to give notice or there's a five-day notice. So that would lean towards a lease rather than a license. License is typically, the general definition includes revocability at will, right? I think there's a case in the, um, I think there's a case which says Florida has rejected that notion. I want to, um, I, I, I saw that. Uh, well, I'll provide that. As, I'll direct you to that. Just historically. I think, I think Florida has rejected that. I'm, I don't want to be misspeaking, but I think Florida has rejected that, that distinction, but I will. I will confirm that, and, and certainly um, otherwise, if I'm wrong. But but be that as that may, in conclusion, I know my time. I understand there are, are there are way there are both sides. You can make an argument that this is a lease, but we also believe you can make an argument that this is a license, and therefore that's why summary judgment on this issue was improvidently granted. So we would ask that you reverse and remand uh, for factual considerations on the merits. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.